This is Katie Hopkins with your European update for ATP, American Truth Project. Do remember, if you want to keep in touch with us and these updates, you can text the letters KTH to 88202. That's the letters KTH to the number 88202. That's in the USA and that's all absolutely free. Now, my European update is one of... I don't ever want to make things gloomy, but really the shuttering of Europe. And it really feels like in summary, the executive summary is that Europe is kind of shutting down. It's almost like I can feel them blowing out the candles and putting the shutters up in front of the stores and getting people to hunker down and turning all the lights off. And if there's noise or music, turning the volume down or off at the at the socket, you know, that's how it feels. It started off with Angela Merkel in Germany. Um, she came out and said that she was very alarmed about the numbers and the rising COVID rates. And the very next day, she put Germany into a draconian lockdown and it lasts until the 10th of January. And that is shutting everything, all shops, restaurants, bars, Christmas markets, New Year's Eve celebrations and fireworks have all been cancelled. Uh, this is a really hard lockdown, a little bit on Angela Merkel. She always reminds me of a sort of older ginger German Mark Zuckerberg. You know, she could absolutely kill both her parents in the knife, in the night with a ice pick and still be in the parliament in a pantsuit at seven o'clock the next morning to discuss fisheries policies and not show a flicker of emotion. You know, she is that level of German. She is Germanic through and through. And of course, this whole cancelling of Christmas is going down really well with the massive numbers of Muslims that she imported into Germany. They call her Mutti Merkel or Mother Merkel. And I'm sure Erdogan in Turkey is also delighted that Germany, one of the sort of centres of Christmas in Europe historically, is now closing up, shuttering up and not doing Christmas at all. Just wanted to take you on a sort of a, a whistle top, whistle stop tour of this shuttering of Europe. Um, and it is as if a playbook is being followed. I've spoken of this playbook before, but it's almost as if Germany made the first move and now everybody's following suit and they're all doing the same thing, but also pretending that they came up with this stuff of their own accord, of their own numbers, of their own science. I mean, it's not possible, but still. In Spain, uh, for Christmas, they're only going to be allowed 10 people and that includes children. Now, if you know the Spanish or the Greek, if you've ever been to a Greek wedding, um, it'll be a little bit like going to a Jewish wedding. Like There's just so many people. The idea you're going to limit that to 10 and the idea that a Spanish family or a Greek family would be able to decide which 10 people were coming, including children, that's virtually being pushed into kind of isolation from a Spanish perspective. It's horrific. Austria they only emerged from a lockdown on the 7th of December. They're being put straight back into another one. Theirs is going to have um, a overnight curfew. And that's an, also another thing we're seeing a lot of. No going out between 8pm and 6am. All bars, restaurants, music venues, etc. are shut. And traditional Christmas markets also being shut down. Christmas again being wiped out. Not just this idea of isolating no gatherings, and this isolation at night as well. I do wonder, you know, I have a family, what happens if you're a single person, you're alone, or an elderly person and alone? You're going to be alone all of those hours as well as having any other social occasion wiped out. Uh, the same story in the Netherlands, uh, in, I always say Netherlands, Netherlands, Italy and France as well. In the Netherlands, um, the Prime Minister Mark Rutte said that um, the way out of this is a vaccine, always linking any kind of hope to the vaccine. The other thing that he alarmingly said is that people in the Netherlands are not going to be encouraged to book, or I would say prohibited from booking any travel until mid-March. Any non-essential travel should not be booked until the middle of March. I mean, how on earth can he project out that far he said this um, to protesters outside, there will come a time when our lives will be normal again with the vaccine 
we have hope and light at the end of the tunnel. Again, this push for vaccine. In Italy, and if you know Italy or if you've been there, you will know how important the church is to them. You will know how important for them midnight mass is. I mean, if you didn't go to midnight mass in Italy, people would assume you were dead. It looks like they will cancel midnight mass in Italy. It's unheard of. And they're going to um, put a curfew in place. Um, They're being told not to hug at Christmas, not to go to church. That's unbelievable culturally from an Italian perspective. Um, And then in France, so if church and mass is the Italian thing in France, skiing at Christmas and in the new year, that, that is a religion in and of itself. And of course, what Macron has done is cancel the ski slopes. He's shutting them down. He's keeping them shut. He's not going to open them for Christmas. About a million people use those ski slopes. He's going to put border guards on the border with Switzerland in case French people try and go to Switzerland to ski just to uphold their national passion. I can't say that this stuff is limited to just the stopping of COVID under any rationale that we've been sold. It's more that in each case, in each European city or country, they're taking what was most special to that culture and that country, and they're saying, no, you're not going to have it. So that's Spain, Italy, France, Austria, the Netherlands, uh, all having things taken away, all having curfews, which I think is particularly cruel, and all being told they're not allowed to do whatever they like for Christmas and limiting numbers. Um, And then in the UK, you know, I have just finished cancelling down my trip to London. I'm supposed to be there um, tonight going into tomorrow. And we were told with 24 hours notice, London would be plunged into tier three. Um, To explain what that means to a layman, it just basically means the strictest rules that there possibly are. If there was something that you would associate with fun, that's been shut down. Bars, restaurants, cafes, theatre, Christmas productions. And this is the thing that, of course, restaurant and bar owners that I love, small business owners would say, is they have geared up to meet the requirements and the rules, and now they're still being shut down. This is the absolute crucifixion of the economy of small businesses in London. I mean, it's a horror story. Uh, My trifling trip to London is neither here nor there but I do hate to let people down. And I was going to visit some of the businesses, a gym in particular, that had kept its doors opened and been heavily penalised and fined. I suppose my overall thought, as I love you and leave you, is that Europe is shuttering. It is closing down for Christmas. And I can't tell you the delight of our Muslim mayor in telling us that he believes that Christmas should be cancelled altogether. You know, you can feel the Muslim mafia cheering him on. And it it feels very hurtful, um, of course, to lose Christmas as well as losing so much of our culture that we've already lost. And I've spoken about that at length before. You know, this all started with Germany. And when I reflect back on darker times still, the world wars, World War I and World War II, at least then we were fighting a visible enemy. And when the capital, London, was destroyed, you could see bombs falling. There was the Blitz and the Blitz spirit as a result. People in bunkers, you know, a sense of camaraderie and national spirit and fighting back. Now, led by Germany once more, we're fighting another war, this time a war of attrition with an invisible enemy and The destruction of our cities throughout Europe is happening with an invisible force. We can't see the bombs falling, but our cities, our livelihoods, our the world as we know it here in Europe is still being destroyed. And I think uh, the fight back against this, should it come, is going to be a far more bloody affair. So uh, wish me luck. I know America has its own dramas going on, Mitch, and the rest of the electoral Uh, college letting us down, um, or certainly the way it's being called. But that's the update here in Europe uh, from me, Katie Hopkins, for ATP. And do remember, if you would like to receive these updates direct to you so that we can keep our family connected and together and to 
look after ourselves when uh, large social media giants would see us dissipated and kept separate. Please do grab your phone um, and then if you text uh, the letters KTH, the letters KTH uh, to this number, which is 88202, uh, absolutely free. Uh, this is in America only, and we can send these updates straight to you. I'm sure you can always opt out if you wish to, uh, but it's a way of keeping our family together. And I look forward to uh, joining you with the Barry and Katie show on Friday and into the weekend and uh, more of my European updates next week. Thank you very much for listening to me. 